Hi there, this is Tim from Second State. Today we're going to uh, have a demonstration of the smart contract search engine and we're going to show you the response time and also show you a few uh, tricks on how to optimize how the smart contract data is indexed and retrieved. Okay, so for this demonstration we're going to again be using the Second State uh, build tool here. So this development environment, if you haven't seen it before, has a couple of sections. You have the contract section and the DAP section. I'll start with the contract section. Here you write your smart contract source code. You then compile it using this button up here and then you can deploy that to the blockchain. And we've showed this in previous videos so I won't go into too much detail other than to mention you'll see that that's already submitted into a block. Uh, the reason for this being that the default blockchain for this uh, particular tool is the second state development chain which has a one second block time which is a really fantastic uh, tool for developing smart contracts and to take it a step further when we go over to the DAP tab we have a HTML source code area as well as CSS and JavaScript and if we hit that run button then over on the right hand side of the screen we will see what is essentially the um, the front end of the application if you will. So this is what your end user will see. It's the HTML output Okay, now the uh, thing I wanted to show you today before we get started is this little resources button here If you click on this you can add by hitting these plus signs JavaScript and CSS. So what I'm doing here is I'm loading in uh, external uh, libraries. So um, jQuery, for example, and over in the CSS example, we're using Bootstrap uh, version 4, and you can see that's quite obvious on the right hand side. But I just want to talk to you about how the smart contract search engine differentiates different contracts from one another. This is a good example of a contract. Uh, this child contract here, which actually in essence has two ABIs. So you've got a parent contract up here, which is quite simple, and then you've got this child contract, which is equally as simple, but the child inherits from the parent. So if we compile this and have a look over on the left hand side, that you'll see that the child contract envelops the parent contract. So that's quite a large ABI. And if we switch over to the parent contract, it's quite small. Now, we could say that these uh, ABIs or these contracts are essentially nested. The ABI uh, hash of the one contract is obviously different to the ABI hash of the other contract. So how the smart contract search engine creates those hashes is it takes this ABI and it sorts it. So it sorts all of the values and then creates a hash and this gives us a deterministic uh, hash which is essentially a key. So another application where this could be useful is say a game um, You can deploy a contract per each game and you, Maybe the, each contract keeps an internal score and say you wanted to look at the overall um, High score or like a leaderboard or you know, who's the best player of this game The smart contract search engine could go ahead find all those contracts and compare the scores and identify this one's got the highest score and maybe build a leaderboard where they're numerically um, ordered and things like that. So there's a few interesting use cases for this. So that's essentially uh, the ABI component of um, the smart contract search engine. So we'll go ahead now and continue with the demonstration. So I'd just like to quickly talk now about the different modes of operation of this smart contract search engine. If you go and visit the source code here on GitHub, uh, second state forward slash smart contract search engine, go down to this Python directory, and inside here you'll see one file called harvest.py. Now everything in relation to the indexing is in this file. Okay, so if we scroll right down to the bottom, I'll just show you these modes of operation. So we have here, you can run this file using the flag uh, full or top up or state or faster state or transaction um, ABI etc. So these different modes um, are useful in a few different ways. First of all, this search engine is made to be a completely open source and free uh, product that you can run on consumer grade hardware, you know, store bought hardware. And so we've designed it in such a way that you can run all of these modes simultaneously, like you could just put all these into a cron and just run them at startup. Or if you had 
uh, a much larger um, amount of information, like you're indexing the Ethereum mainnet or something like that, which we are doing as well, you may get to the point where you'd like to run uh, these modes on uh, different pieces of equipment. So you can basically start up this file in one mode on one machine and you can start it up in an, on another mode in another machine. So it's um, it built for maximum flexibility. And we're to gonna talk about performance soon. And so a good segue actually, let's have a look at the configuration here. So this configuration file, this is the, the one and only config file. Um, so we have the blockchain RPC. Um, we have a setting here called seconds per block. Now this is where we start to get into the, the performance side of things. We mentioned that the second state um, blockchain, the dev chain, has a very fast uh, block interval of, of one second. So this is something that does need to be set um, when you're configuring a, a harvester or an indexer to go and consume all of the data in your blockchain. It needs to know, you know, is it 15 second blocks or 10 minute blocks or one second blocks? Because this will, this um, attribute of the blockchain requires different behavior. So that's one of the settings in here. Uh, we, we use the Elasticsearch endpoint here. And then we have a bunch of indexes. We'll get to these at another time. But again, just with the flexibility, the indexes are created separate from each other so that for different applications, you can uh, utilize this product in different ways depending on, on what your needs are. The one uh, setting down here, which is interesting, is um, max threads. Obviously, different uh, hardware, you know, different um, PCs and operating systems and things have different capabilities. So if you did want to ramp up, um, this is a uses a Python multi-threading. So if you did want to really ramp up parallel processing the bottleneck for harvesting really is the um, the input output the IO so you know talking to the RPC endpoints and uh, making web 3 calls and things like that if you put a high number in here and you can raise the limit on your system to cope with that then it, this will spawn hundreds or, or thousands of threads and that means that a lot of those calls will all happen simultaneously and that will really speed things up because the, the main bottleneck here really is IO now, in order to access this information, we need something that's available through the front end of the DAP. So what we've created here is another second state product. Uh, it's called ESSS. And this is available here. You can use that uh, using Node in a Node.js environment. Instructions are here. Uh, you basically install it, instantiate it. Uh, your provider here is the URL of the search engine. So you just choose one of those and then you can go ahead and use it. So you can do a lot of things here. You can get things like you can get an item based on its transaction hash. You can submit ABIs um, and hashes for indexing. You can call a function to create the hash of the ABI and you can search per address and things like that. Now, if you just wanted to use this on the client side in a traditional non-Node.js way, you can just go to this section here and there is a JavaScript class. So once you've got that, I'll just show you, you simply instantiate that, you put in your service provider and then the calls are the same. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the second state build environment. We've talked a little bit about the uh, smart contract ABI and how the smart contract search engine creates a deterministic hash of the ABI and uses that essentially as a key to find contracts on the blockchain. We've also talked a little bit about the performance or the optimization of the smart contract search engine and the different modes in which that can operate. Obviously you choose various modes and then you also choose a small amount of configuration in the config file and once that's all off and running, it'd be really great if you could go ahead and test that. So that's what I've created is a smart contract uh, test for this. So we're gonna be using this build tool and we're going to also be using this demonstration here. If you go to this URL, you'll see a demo here called search engine. And in here, you'll find the HTML and the JavaScript and the smart contract source code to use in this build tool. So my recommendation is you go to the code, you click the raw button here, just grab all of this and then paste that straight into here. And same on the DAP side, you have the HTML, CSS and JavaScript tabs there. You can just go ahead and uh, grab this code and pop it in. Now I've already set up this environment. So let's get going with this. So uh, normally what we'd do <clears throat> is we would compile the uh, contract in here and then we would deploy that 
to the blockchain. But today what we're going to do is something a little bit different. We're going to actually uh, perform all of the actions in the front end. And so what we've done is we've put the uh, child ABI and the parent ABI and also the parent bytecode and the child bytecode into the JavaScript on the front end. So we'll be using this contract tab just to reference the functions and the operation of the smart contract, but all the actual um, activity execution will be done in the front end today. All right, so let's start off. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy uh, a contract now. So this is the parent contract, which is the smaller of the two, this guy here. And this is very simple. It just sets the parent contract data to the number one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we deploy that. And this uh, creates, using this ESSS, it creates a hash. And it says you expect to see this hash in the index. <clears throat> and then further down here, we're using ESS again to uh, submit this to the search engine. So we're saying, please submit this ABI. It's the parent ABI. And also, um, now that this is deployed to the blockchain, we're going to reference the transaction hash. So we're actually doing like an explicit index of this item uh, into the search engine. And then what we do down here is we say to the search engine, hey, um, given this address from this recent contract deployment, can you go ahead and uh, return us that item at that contract address? And then we drill down and we say, we want to have a look at the particular ABI value. And that's what's printed out here. So we expected to see this and we have this, which is correct. Okay, so just uh, an important uh, point to make at the moment is we're deliberately uh, indexing the information into the smart contract search engine by actually making the calls in the ESSS. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is an uh, interaction with the contract. We're simply going to get the data. So we click that, which is a public function. We say, um, what is the value? It's We expect to see one and we get one. So that's fine. Now what we're going to do is have a look at this function called increment parent contract data. So we're going to call this public function, currently set to one. I'm just going to get rid of that so we can have a bit more room. Great. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we're going to click this button, increment the data. So we're expecting to see two, of course, because it's currently one, and we get back two. So that's excellent. Okay, and I'll just show you this code here quickly. We'll talk you through that. All right, so this code over here, uh, you can see that we're actually calling the increment parent contract data function in the JavaScript. And then we go ahead and we call ESSS again, and we say, can you please update the state of this contract? Uh, this is the ABI, and this is the address. And so, this is, again, we're explicitly pushing this into the engine. We're saying, yeah, I've got some information changes here. I want you to go ahead and re-look at that. So let's just go ahead and have a look at the ESSS um, class. So this is the traditional non-node class that I showed you before. So there is a function here, uh, update the state of a contract. So you pass in the ABI and the address, and that actually goes ahead and pushes that information um, into Elasticsearch. So this is a way that we uh, get guaranteed response from the search engine. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do here is um, decrement. So on the contract, you'll see here that there's a decrement parent contract data, and essentially we're just taking away one. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so here hit decrement the data. We're expecting one because it's currently sitting up at two, and there we have one. Okay, so we've raised the number by one and lowered it by one. All right, so that that example was. Uh, with the parent contract only. And so now let's go ahead and we're looking at the child contract. So contract number two, deployment. So deploying the child contract. This inherits from the parent contract and therefore it has two ABIs. We're gonna expect that we have two ABIs and then we're gonna want the search engine to have both of those ABIs. So let's go and deploy that. Okay, so we expect to see two ABIs in the search engine, and then we wait a few seconds and we see the actual results. Now, there's an important thing to mention here. We're only actually explicitly indexing the child index. Remember before how we called um, the search engine and we can push information into it. So what we did was we only pushed in, we said, hey, here's a child 
ABI, go ahead and index that with this transaction. Now the rest of it, so it's finding that parent one, um, that has to be done using it's like self-discovery. So if we click this refresh button, we'll see we've given it a few seconds. The actual mechanics of the back end of the search engine have gone through, they've seen the information come in and run some tests and gone, hey, this is a particular contract which actually envelops this parent contract. So that's actually part of it. And so it's gone ahead and like in a self-discovery process, it has now figured out that these are one and the same and they belong with each other. And so it's now part of um, this smart contract address now has both of those ABIs uh, registered. Okay, so that's correct operation there. So contact, contract two interaction, we get the data, of course it's one, and then we say um, we wanna increment that. So we expect to see two, of course, and we actually see two, which is correct. And the third, we expect to see one because we're taking away one and we actually get one. So that's also correct. Okay, this takes us to a new section, uh, which is slightly different from the previous two. So let me explain. In this example, uh, contract three deployment, we're deploying uh, the parent contract. But this time what we're doing, if you have a look over here in the JavaScript that executes this, we're only creating a new contract instance on the blockchain and we're not pushing it into the search engine. We're not even telling the search engine about it. We're just deploying it on the blockchain and just waiting to see what happens. So this is purely um, an exercise of self-discovery. So the search engine has to loop through all the blocks, all the transactions, all the ABIs and match up and index this information. Uh, we do that, we just deploy this on the blockchain and we create the hash of the ABI to give us our expected value that there's no activity uh, taking place with the search engine. And then we wait nine seconds and then we, we make a call and we ask the search engine for the information to see whether it's done that yet. Okay, so we'll deploy that. Okay, so as you can see down here, I've created the item, there's a transaction hash and an address on the blockchain. And so these refresh buttons uh, that I've created here, these just make a call, I'll show you this, the code for this, uh, to the address. So they're saying we will uh, just go and ask the search engine to return the information for this address. So after the, the nine or so seconds, we click this. Oh, okay, so we've manually gone and got it there. So as you can see, the information has been discovered on its own in the search engine without us even telling it that a contract was deployed. And so this self-discovery is different to um, when we explicitly index something, we, you know, we push the information in. So contract four is a similar example. We're deploying this time the child contract. Uh, as we said, this one inherits from the parent contract. So again, we're not indexing this contract at all. This is a test of self-discovery. And of course, this has two ABIs. So let's deploy the contract on the blockchain. And then we just wait for a few seconds. So our expected outcome is ABI one and ABI two. Okay, so this is a great example. So in that time frame, it's gone ahead and discovered um, one of the two ABIs. If I just quickly refresh again, okay. Okay, so those are both in there now. So to sum all of this up, the ethos of decentralization is to empower the individual. In order to achieve this, we need to build software products which can run on inexpensive consumer grade hardware. The smart contract search engine can be thought of as a middle layer between a blockchain full node and a decentralized application. This product is an essential part of the future of dApps. Dapps primarily run on lightweight handheld mobile devices and the continuous overhead of simultaneously storing and broadcasting all information on the blockchain network makes it impossible for mobile devices to participate as full blockchain nodes. Mobile devices need another way to access blockchain data. It's a well-known fact that mobile and handheld devices have surpassed the traditional desktop PC. Deploying dApps on these smaller, more convenient and more popular devices is paramount for the adoption and sustainability of dApps.